All right, welcome to Good Afternoon Ghana. Thanks for choosing us. This is where Ghana watches every afternoon at 2 p.m. That's from 2 to 3. Here on Good Afternoon Ghana, we have a lot going on this afternoon. In case you haven't heard, I've got some breaking news for you. So the breaking news is that the Supreme Court has thrown out or has struck out or has dismissed an application which was against the president, Adudankwe Kufuado, uh, against his new ministerial appointees. Now, this application, which was filed by the South Dai Member of Parliament, the, that's on, Honorable Nelson Eche Dapiamakwa, uh, was deemed frivolous and abuse of court processes by the Apex Court. Uh, we're told there was actually an interesting twist today where the Supreme Court presided over the application filed by the Member of Parliament. Um, as the fate of the newly nominated ministers and the reshuffled ministers appointed by President Kufuado hang in the balance. And I'm going to tell you the judges who actually sat on the case just, uh, just briefly before we get on with uh, our first interview. So the judges who sat on the case were Justice Kingsley Kumsin, um, that's a Justice Mariama Owusu, Chief Justice Getru Tokonu, and uh, Justice Amadou Tanko and Justice Yao Dako Asari. Now, just before this decision was made by the Supreme Court, the NDC itself had actually issued a statement where in that statement they were accusing the Chief Justice of judicial bias because they were wondering why a case which was um, set, if this case was actually filed in the Supreme Court way uh, before that of uh, richest skies had to be had before that, and so something for them didn't add up. Now, but basically, what I'm saying is that richest skies case was filed two weeks after uh, Dapiamako filed his case, and yet uh, the NDC said he wonders why the court had to hear that of uh, um, Nelson H. Dapiamako before richest skies case, and actually goes ahead to say that the Supreme Court is doing this because it has other ulterior motives, and I'll tell you a bit more about what the NDC's concerns are. So that's one of the things that uh, we're going to be looking at. But the second topic we intend to look at, that we're hoping that we'll have some time. If we do have some time, it's about 10, 15, 20 minutes or so, we'll look into the, the big launch that happened on Monday where the president launched what has been popularly christened the one laptop per student, which is actually part of a broader agenda, uh, which is called the Smart Schools Project, where students, about 1.3 million of them or so in senior high school, technical and vocation training institutes, are entitled to a tablet. But the minority have some concerns about uh, this initiative, but one, with the pricing, and two, they're saying it is actually this, because as we speak, three teacher unions are on strike. So really, where lies your priority? So these are the two uh, key issues that we intend to look at. So good afternoon, Ghana. Stay tuned in. All right, welcome back. This is Good Afternoon Ghana. My name is Awudu Moro. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for tuning in. Now, let's do this. Uh, well, just in case you just joined us, we have two very important um, conversations to have. The breaking news, as I did give you earlier, just a few minutes ago, is that the Supreme Court has struck out that application brought before it by Nelson um, H.A. Dafiamakwa, who's the MP for South Dai, uh, which was meant to actually injunct uh, the president, uh, actually, well, not necessarily in junk, but there was an application against uh, President Ekufuado's ministerial nominees. Um, the court says that the grounds upon which is asking the court uh, to declare it null and void is actually baseless. And the court actually went ahead to say uh, the application is actually very frivolous and an abuse of court uh, processes. Uh, but I also did indicate that earlier, the NDC had actually issued a statement where they were expressing some concerns about what they believe is a clear case of judicial bias being exhibited by the Chief Justice uh, because the Chief Justice, they're wondering why the Chief Justice would want to get the application which has been filed by Nelson Dafiyama Pohead way ahead of time before that of uh, Richard Delatsky, who also has a similar application, who is actually... Um, uh, uh, declaring that there's something unconstitutional about their proper human sexual and family values bill, uh, which is yet to be assented by the president. And so they're saying it, look, um, Dr. Makos' case went there two weeks 
um, in fact, Richard Della's case when the case when the two weeks before that's of that of Nelson the cover for so why would you want to listen to why would we want to hear this case before that of um, uh, Richard Della Sky and so um, and among other concerns that they have actually raised now we'll look at that statement which was actually issued by the minority but this morning on Good Morning Ghana there was a very interesting conversation that was uh, had with uh, Dr Randy Abbey on this particular issue I'm talking about the NDC's concerns now watch this. Injustice, what to do, uh, and they want us to follow them. Then it's not going to happen, as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't help us. Right, um, there's a bit of a challenge with that. I was sincerely apologise for that. Um, now, uh, to help us unpack all of this, I'm going to be talking to a private legal practitioner that uh, a lawyer Martin be able to help us understand for those of us who are laymen and mere mortals. What exactly happened in court today? What is the judge saying? What, what, was the, uh, what was the court grounds for dismissing the application? I'm also being told, and I'm yet to confirm that, there has been uh, some hearing on uh, Richard Delasca's case as well. I, I'm, I'm unable to confirm that, but a very reliable source is telling me that as the court has actually sat on that matter. And uh, let me speak to um, uh, lawyer Martin Kwebu uh, just quickly. Lawyer Martin Kwebu, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, good afternoon. Yes, it's good to have you on the show, sir. My pleasure. All right. Now, before we do good, that, just good. give me a minute. I want to read to, um, I want to bring excerpts of the NDC's concerns that he has with the Chief Justice prior to the decision or the judgment which has actually been made concerning the application which was brought before it by Nelson H.A. Uh, Dabiyamakwa, who is a member of parliament for the Saudi Constitution. So let's quickly uh, read excerpts of that um, before we speak to lawyer Martin uh, Kwebu. If, uh, it, is that ready? Okay, great. So, um, so it says the NDC, so this was on Wednesday, 27th of March, 2024, press statement, NDC reacts to palpable judicial bias in the scheduling of political cases in the Supreme Court of Ghana, and it says the NDC has become aware of the decision by the Chief Justice of Ghana to list the case of Roxin Nelson H.A. Dapiamakwa uh, versus the Speaker of Parliament and Attorney General, suit number J1-12-2024 um, for hearing on a Wednesday, 27th March, 2021. The NDC is intrigued by the listing of the Defiamakwa case for hearing ahead of the case of Richard Delaskai va, sorry, versus, versus the Parliament of Ghana and the Attorney General. It is, um, and it goes ahead to say, it is worthy of note that Richard Delaskai filed his writ of summons in the Supreme Court challenging the constitutionality of the sexual rights and the Family Values Bill 2024 on the 5th of March 2024. This was almost two clear weeks before Honorable Roxing the Piamakwa filed his writ of summons on the 18th of March 2024, challenging the constitutionality of the latest ministerial nominations by the president. You know, given the uh, political or the recent political deadlock, these two legal suits have created between the executive arm and the legislative arm of government. One would have expected that a date of filing of these cases would have informed the timing of the hearing by the apex court. Yet, for some strange reasons, the case of Honorable Roxon de Piamakwa, which was last in time to be filed, has been highly listed for hearing tomorrow, while that of Richard Delasca, which uh, predated the de Piamakwa case by two weeks, has not been listed for hearing at all. This is in spite of the fact that no application for abridgment of time has been filed by any of the parties in the Piamakwa case. And it goes on and on and on. It says, even more bizarre is the fact that a case filed by some NDC members of parliament challenging the constitutionality of the passage of the electronic transfer levy, e-levy bill, as far back as 2022, has not been given any hearing by the Supreme Court till date. So they're giving instances to actually buttress why they think that some uh, perceived or that some uh, a case for judicial bias can be established. Now, Lord Martin Kwebu, I uh, first of all would like to hear from you that if I came to you this afternoon, well, not the eighth, but I'm a layman, a mere mortal, what is your understanding of what the court did today with regards to the application that it dismissed? Well, so, um, what I've heard uh, in terms of if the news coming out of the court is accurate, I understand the case was called, but Honorable Dafia Mekwo and his lawyer were not in court. Right. And um, 
also that there was no evidence of being said, but that the case is that they refuse. So emphasis is that that they refuse to accept the processes. So more or less understand that all of this is based on what we've heard, if it is true. So if Oh, I, I can actually, uh, Martin, Martin, I can actually confirm it that Dafia Makwa's um, lawyer was not in court because apparently when the bailiffs went to um, uh, Nick Paco Samado's law firm to serve him with a, a notice, what you could call a hearing notice, right? Um, he had actually told, yes. yes, he had actually told his staff that nobody should allow the court's bailiffs to serve them without hearing notice. And apparently, there was also another application of injunction by the Attorney General um, filed against the Fiamma Court's case. So there were two, um, how do you call it, the processes that were supposed to be uh, served him. But then the law firm said, for Nick Wako Samadu, who's the lawyer for the Fiamma, of the Fiamma Court, said, don't allow anybody to serve us any, with anything. And I'm told, um, reliably, from a reliable source, the judge, the Chief Justice heard about it, she got very upset about it, and she said she actually wants to investigate and get to the bottom of it because the bailiff was actually asked to swear an oath. He did swear before giving that information to the Chief Justice that yes, indeed, I went to the law, I went to the law firm, I wanted to serve them, but they didn't give me the opportunity. But however, I dropped the document on the desk. I don't know which desk he, he, you know, he was to refer to, but he dropped the document on the desk and then left. And so the court deemed it as being duly served. Do you understand what I'm saying, Martin? The court deemed it as being duly served. So the yes. Chief Justice, yeah, so the Chief Justice actually went ahead and actually uh, presided over the case. But then the Attorney General told the Chief Justice that this was the highest form of disrespect to the court. And so the court should take a strong exception to what. Uh, Nick Paco Samuado has done and perhaps get the disciplinary committee of the General Legal Council to, to come in and sanction him. So that is, that's as far as what uh, we understand um, happened in court today. Just in case you haven't had that information, I just thought I should let you know. Okay, so um, your clarification that the bailiff left it is not something I read on uh, this, uh, there is a, a, a lawyer's platform I belong to. Right. I didn't, they didn't add that detail that they believe left it there. So, well, you know, this, this, this thing, look, I'm still trying to make sense of it. They, ordinarily, a lot of is open, okay, for business. And so once it's open, not that the firm itself is locked, it appears there was sense in the belief leaving it behind. Because see, if it was a holy day, a non-working day, then that one I can understand the concern or a statement by me that I'm not working. But if it's an ordinary working day, it's, it would give an instruction that he be not saved. So, and let's remember, this is the bailiff's way. We are here to hear Nipaku. Yes, we are here. We are here to hear Nipaku. So yes, this matters. We yes, we are have, only commenting based have, on what we've heard. I have, and I can I can confirm this in line with the uh, professional ethics. I have personally called Nipaku. He has my number. I've called him. To, I've called him twice. He hasn't answered yet. I am assuming that he's busy, and that's why he's not answered my call yet. But we have a relationship. I'm sure he'll call back. So please go ahead. This, it isn't as though we haven't done that. We've died. We've done that. Yes, yeah, good. So, in case the facts change, our analysis too will change. Yes, so please let's be very flexible about it. It all depends on the information we get. It's the information we told to send. And he said, well, the part saying that leave it behind. Yes, that is the, that is the law. Usually, when you go to serve and the person doesn't want to take it, once you've made contact with the person you are supposed to serve or the person 
you instructed to serve. Yes, you can leave it behind. So let's say, Moro, you are in your house. Mm. Then you see that a bailiff is coming to serve you. Then quickly, once you make eye contact with the bailiff, you run into your room. If the bailiff can show that he saw Moro, I would do clearly. You were wearing this uh, brown shirt, African wear, blah, blah, blah. He can describe so much what shows that he saw you and told you that he's here to serve you and you fled. He can leave it behind. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I suppose that is what has been applied here. But all subject to what New Papu would also inform us or what his position would be as to what really happened. Mm. You see, in this matter, let's be careful not to run to definite conclusions based on one-sided accounts. Mm -hmm. Is it the belief is an officer of the court? Yes, so he's told us what he's saying. Yes, to the extent that New Papu hasn't come to contradict that, the court is within its right to mm -hmm. proceed based upon what the belief is said. Mm -hmm. So, but tomorrow, if New Papu has incontrovertible evidence to show that the belief has not given the true state of affairs or did not recount exactly what happens, yes, in law, that one too has consequences. So right. they will take it on. Mm -hmm. But for now, yes, let's say that the Supreme Court acted within its uh, uh, right to proceed if uh, based on the information the belief is given. Now, the part of the Attorney General, <laughs> you know what, Moro, I don't want to comment further on it. It looks like uh, it's just becoming too many. The Attorney General is getting into too many fights. Yeah, he has to pick and choose his fights right. carefully. Mm. The way he's waiting and initiating too many fights, it, it, it's not commendable. Right. So I, I'll leave it there. It's not. It's not something I want to give my currency to. No, That's fine. I, I don't encourage it. That's I, fine. I, I think to be honest, I think Attorney General is getting too political than legal. Mm. Yeah. So I want to leave it there. Now, Martin, because, but whilst yeah. waiting, whilst waiting for the full judgment. Um, by the Supreme Court on this matter, and I, I, I want to believe that we should have a full judgment. I'm not a lawyer. I don't, I don't know how uh, you know your your work, but I'm, I'm sure that it is fair to expect a full judgment as far as this matter is concerned. But if what we it's been reported from the court is anything to go by, where the Chief Justice is saying that in the circumstances there is no reason to attempt to stay the hand of Parliament regarding the vetting of the newly nominated ministers. With regards to the post reassignments, the facts presented by plaintiff indicate that the president had not submitted their names for vetting. There is, no, there is therefore no need to blame this court for any order and the speaker regarding this. The decision of this court is that application is, is dismissed as frivolous and abuse of court processes. Now, just another bit of information. What we're actually again being told that the Fiamako had filed an extra application to rope in the likes of Kojo Ponkroma and some other ministers who were actually um, reassigned. So they were full ministers, they were reassigned. He actually roped in a list of all those ministers and also applied uh, and sent that application uh, or brought that application before the court in sort of to give, it, to give his early application more meat or more substance. So the Chief Justice, um, of course, they're, they're talking about the bench, unanimously dismissed it, citing these reasons. You have followed the Defiamako uh, case. You've seen the reliefs he's, he's seeking in court. Now, having heard, of course, previous facts as well, on the surface of, I mean, the, the, the scant information we have, as the Chief Justice is saying, does it, does it make sense to you? Do you agree with what the Chief Justice is saying in, in, as, as, um, as part of a decision um, on the application which has been brought before her by Nelson Dafiamakwa. Now, uh, Moro, unless I lost you, there are two applications that Dafiamakwa has filed. Those were not determined. Right. Those were not. The list to add of 
compromise was what so was that's the... not been determined is that not the case okay so i i am i don't have clarity on whether the extra list of ministerial nominees that the um how do you call it that Nassim Dafiamako intended to ask is what has been dismissed or the entire application which Nelson Dafiamako has brought before the court, which is to injunct the president, uh, the president's uh, uh, ministerial nominees from being approved by parliament. I don't know that simultaneously or altogether they've all been dismissed or it was actually extra, extra application. There's no clarity on that. In fact, we spoke to Nelson Dafiamako himself earlier before the show. He had agreed to speak to us. We're still working the lines. His lines are extremely busy because these were some of the clarifications that we wanted to seek uh, from him. But we can look at, you know... Um, how do you call it? We can look at we, we, we can we can look at we can look at these, we can do some scenario analysis, basically. That that's that's the point I'm trying to make. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I'm seeking to add upon Kuma and Co. It's a reasonable step to take right. because you see, in the rate that Dafia Mepo filed, he has said that there should be an interlocutory injunction. And then also ask for perpetual injunction to stop the approval of the nominees. Yes. And then also he complained about upon Kuma and Co. That particular the, the fact that they also they have taken office, right? Yes. And have not been brought back to parliament. Absolutely. So is it more what we need to see and uphold so that tomorrow our positions don't change is that. Look, Dafia Mepo wants the court to hear him on certain substantive issues. Fortunately for us, Ghana is not coming to an end. It's not as if some great irreparable damage is about to be done mm -hmm. if we just hold on a bit and give Dafia Mepo a hearing. No. The uh, ministers who have been uh, nominated and are about to be approved, it's not like they, there's something that they have that Ghana, nobody else in the ministries has, such that if these ministers don't hurry and go to the ministry, Ghana, the, those ministries will collapse. That's not the argument. It's not like they are the best top notch, they are mm. the best brains in respect of those ministries. No, these are people who. As far as I'm concerned, they are also Ghanaians, but I don't see anything special. Like they have so much special expertise that we are in a hurry to get them to the ministry. So mm -hmm. from where I sit, I simply say, let's not stampede uh, Dafia Mekpo. No, let's take time and go through the case. Okay. Let's take time and go through. So adding upon Kuma and all those ones, yes, it's something that Dafia Mekpo has a right to ask the Supreme Court to do. And he will, uh, his lawyer will move the application and seek to convince the court. And once that is done, I'm sure the court would look at it and decide where uh, uh, this, uh, uh, how to you know determine it. But it's very important that look, as long as Ghana will continue to exist today, those who are been for the blood oh no 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 throw this case out quick remember that you know, Ghana will be here next year and beyond I so see. let's so, not do things that tomorrow we cannot defend so me speaking like this that's how come I cannot turn the principle mm. because I know next year you would interview me so today if I seek to twist the law next year what would I say it will catch up with me so look notwithstanding the fact that that Fia Mekos application has been thrown out. It is also still the law that don't do anything that usurps the power of the court. Don't do anything, whether they an injunction or not. And moreover, this is a very important point. When the court says that they are not holding the hands of the speaker, let's also remember that it is a law that. When the matter is in court, don't do anything that prejudices the outcome of the case. So just wait. And as I said, after all, what is the agency here? There are people in those ministries. 
Can you go through the list again for me to see? I know a Japan Mesa is going to tourism. Yeah. As far as I'm aware, it's not like a Japan is the top is the top notch tourism professional that if he is not in the ministry, Martin, today, I think tomorrow, I, I think it's, it's months, not that yeah, Martin, is going. I think the issue here for me is not necessarily about whether these appointments are good appointments or whether the persons who are going there are competent to do their job or not. What the Fiamma Court, and I'm sure as you understand, is saying is that the president does not have the right to revoke somebody's appointment or to relieve somebody off duty, but then you reassign the person to another ministry without, coming to, without, without going to parliament to seek uh, approval, you know, because the person has to be vetted. So this is law. The person has to be vetted and approved. And that's why the Fiamma Court decided to go to court. So by the ruling of this court, um, am I right, for instance, to say that, uh, Martin, am I right to say that what the court is saying is that there is everything right with a president, um, with the president, with the president relieving somebody off their position and then reassigning the person to another ministry without parliamentary approval? No. That's, uh, I can't, we can't say so because simple reason is it, it's very, very simple, incontrovertible. Simple reason is that the court has not yet dealt with the case itself. So when the court is dealing with an application for injunction, the court is careful not to make any statements that kind of predetermine the substantive issue. But it's also the case that sometimes, depending on how the application for injunction goes, what the court says in that application, it can sort of effectively bring the matter at one end. Mm -hmm. Okay? So there are two principles that ordinary application. The court doesn't make substantive find this. The court is not dealing with the mother case. So remember that even though the injunction has been thrown out, there is a case itself. So this is not the end of the that this, this, is, this, is the, this is a temporary the court. for injunction right. was just seeking to uh, excellent. So there is a substantive case. So right. the court is usually careful not to do anything in the application for injunction that affects the substantive matter. That shows or determines a substantive, substantive matter. Mm. However, there's also another principle that sometimes the decision and in the interlocutory injunction may give an indication. You see, the word is may, not necessarily 100% correct, but it sometimes gives an indication of how the substantive matter will go sometimes. So the emphasis is on sometimes. That's why I came, I kept using the principle that, look, me in all of this, I think that because the harm to the nation will be negligible if these guys don't go, I would advise the president to just stay off this thing till, till the case deals with the Dafia Macro case. So you see, that is where you and I differ, where I was saying that so what I'm looking at are those ministers' nominees. When I look at them, and that's my substantive thing. Next year, if you ask me, I can still give you the same answer. I look at them, and I'm like, what is it? Is it what extra expertise have they shown that, hey, these guys, these are the best in Ghana. These are the best. Without them, Ghana is collapsing. Mm. Once I don't see that, listen, I'll not rush to go on with the process when the case is not been dealt with. Because, Moro, it's also our law that if a case is in court and you do anything that affects the main substance of okay. it, it's contempt of uh, court. So let's read. You'll find this case, Ghana, Republic versus Bank of Ghana, number two, the governor of the Bank of Ghana. Mm. Then there is Yafifa Mensa, then there is Caroline uh, O2, and, and um, 
particularly for Abu Kari. Yes. Okay. In that particular case, it's a contempt case. So Governor Addison was committed for contempt. The Bank of Ghana itself was also committed for contempt. Caroline right. Ochoa was secretary. She was also committed for contempt. Okay. All those people. Right? Okay. But so you see, but I'm coming to the substance of it. During that case, mm -hmm. but let's quickly mention that in that case, there was a certain order for injunction that what the governor and the bank and the officers did contravene that order. That's the principal reason they were committed. But before they were committed, the bank of, I mean, they argued that there was no order stopping them. They argue that, oh, what they did, they say briefly, they sacked an employee, Benjamin Dufour, while the case was pending in court. And this is what they sought to do. There was an order for injunction that they shouldn't bring Dufour before a disciplinary committee to uh, uh, this and, uh, sack him or otherwise discipline him while the matter was pending. So the court order was don't take him to a disciplinary committee. What they did was that they sacked him outright without right. going through a disciplinary committee. Okay. So long story short, this part of the case, please, we are very emphasis on this part, that particular principle. When they came to court, uh, the, the, the lawyer applied for contempt, blah, blah, blah. Okay. They came to argue that, ah, we've not done anything wrong. The court order says, don't take him to any disciplinary proceedings, disciplinary court. Uh, 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 sorry, we didn't do that. He yeah. did something wrong. Okay. The Supreme Court said, no, 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 no. You can't do that. It doesn't matter that you didn't go to a disciplinary committee. It is still law. And please note this under Article 125, Clause 3. Okay. It is still a law that final judicial power belongs to the court. So when a matter is in court, don't do anything to prejudice the case. All right. So that's the point. Then, very quickly, as I just have to go on to a mission. Sure. In our history, this point that even when there's no court order, I don't do anything to prejudice the outcome. If not, that is still content. If we used to commit two ministers, one, Klobo Eduse, Kwame Nkrumah's time, he deported Balugu when the case was in court. There was no order for injunction. But just because the case was in court, and Krobo Eduse deported Balugu, Eduse was committed for contempt. Fast forward, you come to Second Republic, the Dankwa Buzia Dombo tradition, the Dombo you hear there. Dombo, at a point in time, was a minister of interior in the Buzia regime. He to the same he deported Olympio. I think that's Gilchrist. Uh -huh. While the case was in court, no other of injunction had been made. Yet, the court committed him. Okay. So for me, as I said, my main point is that, listen, where are we in a rush with these ministers? Especially as even the government is over bloated. Why are we rushing? Okay. Our neighbors, Cote d'Ivoire is managing the country with 40 ministers. In Ghana here, both JM and Baumia say they will do what? 60 minutes test, right? 60, 60, if my memory says me right. He's, he's talking, so he's talking. Call Baumia JM. Yes, Baumia is talking 50. Sorry? He's talking 50 ministers. And the former president is saying uh -huh. not, and then JM, not more than 60, yes. Uh -huh. JM is also, so he can have deliberations with them to, uh, what do you call it? Learn anything or two from their plans. Okay. Listen, we are not in a hurry. Okay. I would not advise President Kufuadu. Uh, listen, sorry, I'm not advise the uh, minister, uh, the Parliament, uh, the Speaker of Parliament to go ahead with the uh, uh, the, the vetting. I would not. I'll okay. tell you that. Listen, why uh, don't you wait for the substantive matter to be dealt with? Okay. And uh, uh, let's get into the matter itself and the substantive matter to. The Supreme Court can deal with it quickly. It will be done within the next four weeks. The Supreme Court can go into it. Okay. After all, Parliament is on recess. So the Supreme Court can finish hearing it. And by the time Parliament comes, if the Supreme Court uh, throws out the case, the way will be clear. 
if the Supreme Court doesn't throw out the case, you uh, will know Martin, how to proceed. Right. Martin, yes, before... So if, if I had my way, if I were a speaker, I would not go ahead. Right. Now, before Martin, before you take leave of us, because um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very aware that you have other things to, to, to take care of, but just, just briefly, the NDC's um, statement that he issued, which sought to express some concerns about what he calls palpable judicial bias in the scheduling of political cases in the Supreme Court. And it cites this Dafia Makwa's case, which has been heard, um, even though, it, 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 even though there's, there's actually an earlier case which, was at, which has been filed by Richard Delasky uh, two clear weeks uh, before that of Dafia Makwa. Why here that of Dafia Makwa before Richard Delasky's case? What do you make of uh, these concerns that the NDC is raising? Now, what I'll say is that um, raising the concerns, it's within the NDC's rights. That's the first principle. In a democracy, we must have dissenting views. The day we all begin to think alike, that will be the end of our society. But in every society, you always need dissenting opinions, OK? And a lot of the time, the dissenting opinions help us to rethink, help us to review what we are doing and to improve. So on that principle, you can't fall the NDC. Now, um, as I stated earlier on, my concern is the fact that some people are saying Sky, Richard Sky's case was also called. I wish we could confirm that. I wish we could, so that we'll be very clear and firmer in the well, answers here. So I don't know why. So the person who put it on my platform, I'm challenging the person. Um, but I haven't had. So because of that, give me, uh, I mean, I'm in two minds. But in the absence well, of a confirmation of that, of that information. Called, so in the absence of the confirmation of that information, do you think that the NDC's concerns are valid? Yeah, so if it's not confirmed, that is to say, if Richard Sky's case was not called, yes, the NDC has good grounds. So it's all about if, 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 if Richard Sky's case was not called, yes, they have cause to complain because then they feel they are being rushed when the Richard Sky case, which is two weeks earlier, has not been called, right? Yes, and let them complain. Nobody will gag the NDC. As I said, it's not even healthy. For our democracy. Look, you know, even at the 67th independence uh, uh, anniversary, in the president's speech, you see he even referred to it. Now he's embracing dissent. Mm. You know, initially he was not happy when people criticized him, but in his own speech, he says that it doesn't serve any purpose if we all think alike. I mean, because even when we are doing something good, you would need opposition. Because when the people oppose that good thing you are doing, you look at it, and to shame them, you even improve it better. So in the president's own speech, the 67th anniversary, it's in there. You see him say, no, we can't all have the same view. So on that score, we can't, uh, what do you call it, fall the NDC, especially as, at least, it's not, it didn't abuse the chief justice. Okay. The courts themselves have been saying that, yes, they would need feedback from us. We as a society, because remember, justice emanates from the people. So, uh, and part of it, so that's why people serve, the ordinary citizens serve as jurors in criminal trials. So you see that people participate. But some other aspects are technical, so they are reserved for lawyers. So you see, uh, I mean, trained lawyers who become judges, Supreme Court judges, High Court, Court of Appeal, etc. But because justice emanates from the people, which is also in the Constitution, it's a constitutional provision, mm. right? If the people have grievances, by all means, let them voice those out. And finally, as I look for the provision saying justice emanates from the people, finally, let's also make the point that they, yes, very good, Article 125, Clause 3, I'm sorry, Clause 1. It says, justice emanates from the people and shall be administered in the name of the republic by the judiciary, we shall be independent and subject 
only to this confusion. Yeah, so it's, it's emanating from us, and then it's been done on our behalf. And as I said, we also participate in criminal trials as jurors, etc. So if, if, if people think something is not going right, they can protest. And the Chief Justice is one person who also is like-minded. She's open to criticisms and review because she also has been holding a Kufuado to account. I've forgotten in September 2023 at the bar conference, she complained that the executive were starving the judiciary of funds, mm. that it affects their work. So she also publicly complained about President Kufuado. Just check it at the bar conference. It was news where she said the executive was starving the judiciary of funds. I hope the situation has improved. If it has not improved, then this case is a reminder to President Kufuado to release funds and grant other uh, facilities and logistics for the judiciary to run well, because that's very, very important. We need a strong judiciary for a strong democracy. Number two, the Chief Justice at her own vetting, when she was asked, what does she want to have change in the constitution? One of the things she mentioned is that Ekufuado should not have a role in the discipline of lawyers. Moro, that's a very strong point, eh? that we should amend the constitution to take away the powers of the president in the discipline of lawyers. And of course, you all know that the unsaid uh, truth and the elephant in the room is that we don't want the president to appoint Supreme Court judges. So when you see the chief justice telling you that he should not be involved in the discipline, you know, they are neighbors. Uh -huh. So as soon as you deal with the discipline, the next thing is, ah, but who even appoints them? The president, right? Oh, no, remove the president. He should not be appointing uh, Supreme Court judges and the other superior court judges. So with such a background of the chief justice, I don't think the NDC have done anything different. They are of like mind. We are yeah. all active citizens. Thank you very much. And and, and, and finally, uh, Martin, before you take leave of us, I just want to find out from you. Martin, are you still there? Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, you. You, uh, you haven't told me if it is normal practice for, um, for these cases. I mean, so you talked about the fact that there was an earlier case two weeks before, two weeks prior to that of Nelson um, uh, Eche de Fiamakbo. I just want to find out from you as a lawyer, um, have I lost him? It looks like. It looks like I've lost uh, uh, the Honorable uh, Martin uh, Kwebu. I wanted to ask him whether it was actually normal practice as, uh, or an abnormal practice, as the NDC has pointed out, that a case which has been, uh, which has been in the courts for a very long time hasn't been heard uh, by the court, and yet a fresh case, which has to do with that of Nelson de um is being heard. And if you read the NDC statement, it says it's quite apparent that this is a ploy by the Chief Justice to fast track the determination of the suit filed by Honorable Roxanne de Fiamakbo, while the determination of Richard Delasca's suit is deliberately and unduly delayed to enable the president to shelve the crucial sexual rights and family values bill that has been passed by parliament. And it goes ahead to say that even more bizarre is the fact that a case filed by some NDC members of parliament challenging the constitutionality of the passage of the electronic transfer levy, uh, which is the e-levy bill as far back as in 2022, has not been listed for hearing by the Supreme Court till date. Uh, the arbitrary exercise of administrative discretion by the Chief Justice, particularly in the scheduling of cases in the Supreme Court, goes to fortify the high perception of bias on the part of the judiciary. And it says such judicial manipulations go to confirm the growing public perception that the current Chief Justice is a pliant accomplice and an abettor of the misrule of the despotic Ekufuado government, MPP government. And it says, while the Constitution of Ghana vests discretionary powers in the Chief Justice and the discharge of her administrative duties over the judiciary, it is important that such discretionary powers are not exercised arbitrarily, capric cap uh, capriciously, and whimsically. Unfortunately, we can't, we can't treat the topic. So the second topic, because we're just a few minutes um, more to end the show. But we'll take a short break. We'll be right back. All right. So this, this afternoon, she was, um, was, was actually planned to be a two-topic um, program, which is to look at the... Um, matters in court um, in respect of 
the MP for South Dai, Nelson Defiamapo, who has actually filed an application before the court injuncting uh, the president from going ahead to, um, as you call it, um, from, from going ahead to approving or actually uh, appointing uh, ministers into his government because according to him, once these guys have been relieved, you can't appoint them without it going to parliament. So that's one issue. Uh, we know that the Supreme Court has dismissed, actually not that substantive case, that's the mother case. There's actually an adjoining case now. What actually happened this afternoon was that uh, the member of parliament got his lawyers to actually file a temporary court order application to add a list of other ministers whom, uh, according to the plaintiff, must be injuncted from performing their duties. Now, the court, that is what the court has dismissed. So the substantive case apparently is still, um, is still there, it's still very much alive. So that's what we dealt with. And we got uh, Martin Pebu to help us analyze that. The second topic we actually wanted to do was the uh, one tablet, one student uh, policy, which is part of a grand scheme um, or grand agenda, which is called the Smart Schools Project. We'd actually be able to speak to our education on this, but unfortunately, time is not our best ally. And so at this juncture, I want to say thank you very much for your time. It's been wonderful having you as my audience. Same time Monday, good afternoon, Ghana uh, returns. My name is Audumoro. The show is produced by the man Josiah Tope, uh, hard guy. Wonderful chap, but also the production team, uh, Mr. Awatri, and all of you who made this possible. Um, Kiki and the rest of you, thank you very much for making this possible. Have a wonderful afternoon. Bye bye.